Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show. We're still counting down to episode 300, if you don't know all that already. So uh, this is episode 296, 96, 97, 98, 99. So four more episodes than the fifth episode, episode 300. Uh, there'll be links here, blah, blah, blah. On the website, there'll be links to get to the Eventbrite and to the Justin TV, but I'll have the links here too in case you're not watching or going to the website or watching on TiVo. TiVo people, um, this is really weird. Uh, I went to check my TiVo stats today and uh, apparently episodes, I don't know, 292 and 293 uh, weren't showing up and then I go to Blip and they're private. I don't know, but 292 had a bunch of views from TiVo, 293 didn't. They're not showing up on the TiVo list. I don't know what happened, but um, hopefully everything's been squared away by the time this video gets posted. Um, I've just released 294 today on the website. 295 goes up in another week from today, uh, today being March 31st. Uh, and I'm recording the next four episodes um, because March, I'm sorry, April 28th is episode 300. And uh, I'm going back to... Uh, Going back to Houston for the rest of my training tomorrow. I had to come back in town today for some stuff. Um, so that's why I went ahead and just decided to record the other four today. And um, so, yeah, the uh, next four, uh, recording the next four today. So what you're going to have happen is uh, 290, uh, this is 296. So you have an episode today. Then there'll be an episode Thursday. Then next week there'll be an episode on Monday, an episode Thursday. And then you know what happens? It's April 28th. Snoochie boochies. All right, so uh, that will be um, that will be episode three hundred. I've already wasted two minutes of the intro, so let's get going on. Uh, links are already there. So next wine we're doing here is a wine I originally bought for our, my sommelier study group. Uh, we were tasked to buy a Riesling. It could be from anywhere in the world. So I went to Specs and I was like, eh, I'll get a Riesling. I was like, let's not go to Germany. Let's not go to Austria. Let's not do Alsace. Um, so outside of that, where am I going to go? So I stumbled upon an Australian Riesling. So um, I've had this wine for quite a while in the house, um, probably for at least a year, maybe a little longer, because I'm thinking it was it was a little over a year ago that we were tasked to do this. And uh, then we just kind of stopped meeting, which that's all right. Uh, kind of bummed about that. We're trying to get it back together. I know my schedule with all the training and everything has been not conducive to it, but hopefully when I get back in town on a permanent basis, we can do it. All right, so what wine is this? So this is the Jim Berry, the Lodge Hill Dry Riesling 2008. So we're talking six year old, it's actually six and a half year old wine because they harvested it in February of 2008. Um, so on the website, it says you can buy it for $22. I'm not sure that's $22 Australian dollars now that I think about it because it is from Australia. Uh, I don't know if it's U.S. dollars, but I looked up specs. because I, I, I'm not going to dig through a year's worth of receipts to find it. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> this was not meant to be a review wine, but I'm like, you know what? Let's have it. Um, so on specs website, the 2012 list for $14.94. So I'm thinking this was probably an under $20 bottle of wine when I bought it. Um, anyway, so Jim Berry. Um, so Jim Berry is one of those uh, people that had been, uh, I wouldn't say like the, uh, a founder of Australian winemaking because that was much earlier than him, but he definitely was somebody that had a lot of impact on the, the, the 20th century uh, winemaking in Australia. Um, he uh, studied winemaking at the Roseworthy Agricultural College. I uh, said he was the 17th 
a, a 17th certified winemaker in the college, but the college has been doing this for 100 years, so I'm not really sure what that meant. I don't know if he was the 17th the year he graduated, so it was a little unclear on the website what they were trying to say. Um, but anyway, he bought his first vineyard in 1959. Now, when you go to his, the website, and he passed away in 2004. So um, uh, the oldest, they have four vineyards that they've listed on their website. The oldest one, as far as purchase time, was 1964. And so I'm not sure if the very first vineyard they, they have, but they don't make wine from it. They just grow grapes or they blend it in with other stuff or they sold it off. I'm not really sure what happened to the very first vineyard in 1959. Um, anyway, uh, it's in the Clare Valley and uh, Clare Valley is definitely well known for Shiraz. If they also say it's well known for Riesling and I'll be honest, I, you know, I don't think about Australia when I think Riesling outside of Alsace and Germany. I, I just don't. Um, I don't think about it really pretty much anywhere outside of those two except when you're talking California and Washington and uh, Rieslings. Um, outside of that, I don't really think about Riesling at all. But um, apparently Riesling does really well in Australia. So again, this is a learning. Part of this whole website thing allows me to learn about wines. Um, that's why you know, I tell people I'm a generalist. I know a lot about a lot of areas. I don't, I'm not a specialist in any one spot. All right, so um, anyway, so, and of course, suggestion. You know, this is the thing I use to do my white balance for the, uh, for the uh, podcast here. And then I have my exposure card. If you've been a long-term viewer of the show, you know I've told you where to buy some art, art shop. And these are basically samples. No, they got some crap on this one. Uh, sorry. Um, these are basically like paint samples. But these are as close. These are really close, especially the gray one. You get the 18% gray for exposure. Anyway, um, if you really want to know where to get them, email me mark at 1337wine.com. Pretty simple. Go to the website, click the contact me form, um, and I'll tell you exactly where to get them. They're free, by the way, and you get all you get all the, these sizes. All right, so enough of that. So let's get into the wine. Try to let it warm up a little bit because I had it in the fridge for like two weeks. And I just pulled them out maybe 15 minutes ago. So this and another white wine that we're going to do. All right, so right off the bat, um, I'm getting... Wow. Okay, so if you watch the movie Psalm, and Ian Cobble talks about rubber hose and, and fresh tennis ball from Australian Riesling... I can't believe it. I mean, and it wasn't I went in with a predetermined idea about it because I completely forgot about this. But yeah, I can totally smell like that tennis ball. That's, I, I'm, I'm floored. I'm absolutely, absolutely floored. I'm not sure about fresh cut rubber hose, rubber garden hose. Um, you know, I, I can smell rubber, okay? I don't know if it's tire or garden hose, but... I, I can really get that, that smell. And, and I'm not saying you don't get this outside of Australia, but it's very prominent. There's, uh, on the fruit though, there is a little bit of fruit in here. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of lemon, lime, citrus, but I kind of get a little cantaloupe, a cantaloupe rind, you know? If I get any floral, it's probably generic white flowers. Someday I'll, I'll go to the flower shop and really, really like delve deep into smelling some flowers here. But yeah, I mean, there's definitely a, a um, an artificial smell, like a like a you know, I don't want to say chemical because it, that makes it sound like it's a bad smell, but definitely like that. I mean, the, the tennis ball is a really good description. Rubber hose is a good description. Um, clean is a good description. Um, I wouldn't say like hospital or dentist office. Well, really not dentist office because that, that's really more like nitrous. But um, you know, like almost. You know what? It's almost like you walk into a room that's been freshly painted. That's another good descriptor for it too. Just like new construction. Yeah, like fresh drywall. Like when you walk into a house that's still being constructed. So there's, I wouldn't say like the wood, but like that drywall, almost that kind of fresh drywall and paint type of smell, very much like that. 
I kind of want to keep smelling it, but we got to move along because we're running short on time. <laughs> I remembered to bring it out. Um, a little, a little fuzzy on the tongue. I'm not gonna say it's any tannins, but kind of fuzzy. Um, don't really get all those descriptions about like drywall and fresh painted house and all that. I mean, there's really good acid on this. I mean, this is a six year old wine. Um, yeah, not six and a half, it really is six years old. I mean, it was harvested almost six years ago. Uh, in, what, six years and two months, about one month. So, um, you know, there's, there's some good acid to it. Um, I can feel the alcohol a little bit, but it's definitely dry. I would not, I would not confuse this with a German Riesling at all. I mean, I guess I get a little bit more, we still get that fuzziness out of it. I get a little bit more of that, um, I kind of get maybe that tennis ball, that rubber, that rubber type of thing, not quite petrol um, or chemical, that, that chemical stuff, but very, very acidic. Like it's, that, this acid is high, very high. Um, really, really lime and lemon just coming through on this. Um, I, I didn't really look hard at the, um, yeah, they talk about grapefruit, orange blossom, lemon and lime juice. And that really, I think that really gets it. And that's on the, that's on the nose, they say, but uh, minerality, I don't get guava, strawberry. I don't know what rose water is. Never tried rose water. I don't get anything strawberry or guava-like. I haven't had a guava in a long time, so I'd have to revisit that. But you know what? It is definitely a dry, dry white wine. Really good on the acid. Um, my mouth's watering, uh, kind of fuzzy. So that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, like I get, like I said, I get that cantaloupe rind. Um, you know, I think it's drinking really well for a six year old white wine. You know, not, not that, you know, white wines have to be drunk at one or two or three years, but this is, if you didn't know any better, you weren't really trying to evaluate the wine, you'd think it was a recent vintage. I think these lights really f wash out, but I mean, it's it's almost got a goldenish color to it. And I'd say, Lime, more than anything else. Lime, lime, lime. All, all, all about the lime on that. Pretty good. I mean, fifteen to twenty dollars U.S. If you want to get something that's not the same old Riesling from Germany, especially um, if you're wanting something that's a little different, uh, not Alsatian, not California or Washington. I would totally go for this. All right, I want to have more Australian reason because I really want to delve into what it's all about. I like it. Definitely recommend buying it. All right, so uh, that's going to wrap it up for today's show. Um, as always, I want to thank you for stopping by. Click the links above to friend me up. Hit that donate button over there. Send me a few ducats to buy some more amazing wine. I don't know why I look over there. You can't even see the bottles. At least this time you can't. Sometimes you can see like the little edge of the bottles. Um, but uh, send a few ducats. Again, uh, I'll have links below at the website. Uh, I've already put them on the. I've already put them in the lower third uh, for the, my Justin.tv feed for episode 300. And for the Eventbrite, if you're going to be in town, don't sign up if you're not going to be in town. If you're going to be in town, sign up for it. If you're my Facebook friend and you and there's an event on Facebook too, and you've clicked you're going, and that really kind of means you're going to watch online rather than actually be at Max's Wine Dive, um, that's fine. But if you're going to be at Max's Wine Dive and you haven't registered on Eventbrite, there's a few of you that say that you're going and you haven't registered on Eventbrite, um, so I don't know which, what you're doing, 
please make sure you register on Eventbrite. Uh, as of March 31st, we're about halfway sold out. Um, remember, I have a very small room, so I can't put a lot of people in there. So halfway sold out isn't really a lot of people, but it's a good crowd. It's only everybody actually does show up. So uh, please do that, and um, that's going to do it for this show. Um, thank you for stopping by, and we will see everybody again next time.